Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. Remember, if you enjoy the content, then consider sticking around. And we've still got a 10% discount on switchup.gg where you can buy your eShop cards on Nintendo Online using code SWITCHUP. We're going to look at the performance of the three Assassin's Creed games, go over the frame rates, have a look at handheld performance as well, as well as download sizes, textures, shadows, lighting, all the fun stuff, and the one quite obvious area where they really excel on Switch, plus a couple of additions that come with the Nintendo Switch version. I don't think I can possibly compete with Glenn's last pun, the ass in Assassin. Should you pick it up once again on Switch, or are Ubisoft the only ones making a killing? Well, let's find out. Right off the bat, let's get the size issue out the way. Now the base download is around about 7 gigs, but then there's the audio pack if you want the multilingual version with voice actors, that's 3.6 gigs. Brotherhood is another 9.7 gigs. Revelations is a further 9.9 .9 gigs. And then there are the short films Assassin's Creed Lineage and Assassin's Creed Embers. But the quality of them is terrible. Watching them on the Switch is not the way. Just go onto YouTube, you can watch those completely free. When all said and done, you're looking at upwards of 35 gigs to download everything, but absolutely the three games should have been available on the cartridge. And really, in my opinion, that should be the policy of Nintendo. But uh, the world is going a strange direction. Next up then, let's look at the frame rates. Now, as you'd hope, they're all running at a locked out 30 frames per second. This goes for Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Revelations. There are a few times in handheld where I did notice some frame drops. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture those, but 99% of that handheld performance is 30 FPS. I said right at the start about the Switch's unique feature, and it obviously is the handheld experience. Assassin's Creed in the palm of your hand is delightful. When everything's shrunk down to that small screen, something that Glenn knows really does stand out and that's just how well designed the locations are. Whether it's exploring Rome or zipping across the rooftops in Revelation using the awesome hook blade, on the OLED they just pop. Now on the flip side of this is the docked experience. It still looks good, it's running at native resolution, I can't be sure if there's any dynamic resolution scaling, and aliasing, that's the jaggy edges on most items, seems to be reasonably in check. Shadow quality is high enough and there are a few instances where there are multiple light sources, but one of the shadows is massively cold on the Switch version, leading to one looking crispy and one looking pixelated. The LOD or level of detail has also taken a hit. This is where you can still see items or people in the world, but the closer you get, the more detailed they become. When this is too close to the camera, it can be quite strange. People's faces can change in front of you, or your horse can suddenly get a new set of clothing. It's not as big a deal as the draw distance itself. I can't attest for the other versions of the remaster, but certainly on PC, draw distance is higher than this, and there is the potential that it could impact some gameplay moments, like following your horse and it suddenly disappears, or tailing someone for them to vanish into the distance. One area where the remasters have seen an improvement over the original are textures. Now much of this is to do with the different shaders being used, but textures look very crisp and sometimes a little bit unusual. They can stand out starkly. It's particularly evident when you have a white against a different colour background. It almost gives the texture shimmering you can sometimes see. Not necessarily a negative, but a personal preference. And in all honesty, I think I favoured the original lighting from before the remaster. It was a touch more atmospheric. It had a green tint to it, but it doesn't look bad here, and certainly upscaled to this resolution, it's looking nice and crispy. Those shaders just don't always work on all the NPCs, giving some of them a slightly unusual appearance. If you weren't aware though, the NPC system in Assassin's Creed games is completely random, so no two cutscenes will be the same in terms of background NPCs. 30 frames per second isn't the whole story though. Frame pacing is a big issue and component when dealing with smooth images. The frame pacing with the Assassin's Creed games is very good, and that consistency means it feels good in motion with very little latency and is smooth enough although obviously 60 frames per second is the optimal we're not going to see that on switch when playing in handheld you will not be able to capture video at least on revelations or brotherhood this is a sure sign that they were trying to squeeze out every last bit of performance while all three titles do feature rumble, none of them have gyroscopic control. This is more likely to do with the gameplay mechanics not really requiring it like they do in some of the newer games, but it wouldn't have hurt to have it in there for looking around, and seeing as they'd already built it for the other versions, it's a bit of a shame, but not really necessary. The engines are beginning to show their age, and as such you will notice some glitchiness. The occasional moment where fabric will shift, or in the background something will shimmer, and certainly as mentioned shadows suffer, and can sometimes appear broken. Acoustically speaking, the three games have held up incredibly well. Another huge 
Silvester at his villa in honor of his immense fun. Sound fidelity seems of a high quality, with a particular highlight just being the excellent orchestrated scores of these games. To summarise then, these are three very playable versions of the Assassin's Creed games on the Nintendo Switch, but they feel like the basics as far as a port could go. In their defence, they do run at 30 frames per second, which is more than we can say about things like Grand Theft Auto, and there is some touch screen functionality thrown in as well when playing in handheld, which can be used to navigate menus. So if all you're after is the original collection then you'll be in luck and I'm sure you'll have a great experience. Ubisoft in my opinion have really let the fan base down by not putting all three games on one single cartridge. Having just seen what's happening with the 3DS online shops and yeah we've got the promise of being able to download games for the air quotes foreseeable future it in my opinion massively impacts the value that product holds when it can't be played without the internet and without a download and it's just not the way things should be going. For digital buyers you're going to have to make sure you've got a significant amount of space on your switch and you may find that some of the older mechanics don't quite hold up as well as your nostalgia remembers. Particularly I found camera control and falling off of heights without meaning to much more of an issue than I remembered. But Ezio is probably one of my favourites in the series and I loved how they played out his arc with you gradually ending up as an old, basically as an old man. If you've got any questions about these three versions or if I forgot anything then please do pop it down in the comments. If you like the Joy-Cons you saw in the video you can save, I think it's $8 with a code down in the description. They're very good, I use them all the time. The accuracy of the analog sticks isn't nearly as good as the official ones but they also have gyro and they have normal rumble and the battery life's okay and they can charge on the switch so there you go didn't intend to do a little advert for those but yeah we get a small kickback from you buying those but i know quite a few of you have got them in the comments let someone know if what you think of them if you like them or don't whatever thanks to our patrons and to all of you that support the channel it really does mean the world to us and do stick around if you like to get the best reviews of the big and the small games on the nintendo switch for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya